All right, YouTube, today we're going to play some blue light control. We're going to try out hieroglyphic illuminations instead of the ops. My teammate that I played with at GP Detroit, he, whenever he cast this illumination, cycled it, it was only marginally worse than op, and then whenever he cast it, it was amazing. So, we're going to give this a try. The rest of it's pretty stock, so we're just going to jump into a quick league. Probably not quickly, but we're just going to jump into a league and go because where I just want to play play this deck. I don't know why this deck is good, but it is good. Like it continues to win and people continue to choose to play it. So like it's about time it's about time I figured it out. I played a nice little control mirror to start this morning out. I just played a little two-person queue just to warm up. And it was quite quite a bit of fun. I played uh, I got one game one. Kind of a long, drawn-out game. I didn't think I was going to win, but he must have drawn, like, all of their land, all of their removal, because I resolved a Teferi through, like, six cards. And he didn't even... But I had to counter one thing. So, in game two, it just kind of tempoed me out. And then game three, I just was on the play and I started cryptic commanding their lands. We're going to put this on top. Card's real good. Bloodstained Mire. We're playing against a graveyard deck. The Cellar Wreckage is great. If we're playing against a fair deck, then... Our hand's just great. We're playing against... Okay, so we are playing against a graveyard deck. Take it easy. That's a tame start. What they do. They didn't really hit anything of great payoffs, but they also don't need too too much from here. It's been kind of pretty good hits for the home team. I'm gonna leave this uncracked. I want to hit land and then just slightly, you know, increase my chances ever so slightly to do that. That's good. So I think I'm actually just gonna get a planes. Casting this settle is more important than casting this cryptic command. And I would like to just preserve my life total, I think. I'm going to be looking, I think, chump block with this, like, ambush viper, the snapcaster mage, when possible. And maybe I should have just done that this turn and not played a, uh, not played my search. That might have been the better option there. But I just like, whenever I can get this card going, it feels nice. A path to exile on top would be pretty great. All right. So we're likely going to like play Snapcaster Mage, block and path it, unless my opponent does anything too wild here. Blocking Blista for zero. Okay, so here comes a big old um, Bushwhacker. Okay. So what do we got? We got three. So I got to block some of the three power things. It's going to get their bridges out of the graveyard, but. So deck this. Take three, six. Three, six, eight, ten, twelve. We got a one. Which is not ideal. We need to put a stop on here before put stops on. So let's go block this. Then we will path a grave crawler. We 
we take three. So we need like an untap. Well, we can't do that one, unfortunately. We hit a flight of strand. So let's cycle this. Close. Close, but not close enough. So maybe I did, maybe I was supposed to just ambush Viper in my Snapcaster Mage a turn earlier and not play the search. That might have been poor of me. But against this deck, I'm fairly certain we want our Baneslayer Angels, our Timely, the three Rest in Pieces, and then maybe like Supreme Verdict just to reset everything, but I don't know if that's actually good. Uh, probably my counter spells are not good. I'm going to assume that Search for His Kanta is not good. My Vendillion Click, I might want a Vendillion Click as well because it's just going to like trade and exile some things. I probably don't need all of my Jaces. I probably can just like trim each one of the Planeswalkers. Because I'm bringing in a couple more fives. Like the Planeswalkers aren't really what's going to set me up this game. We're going to go like this. I don't know if that's super, super what I'm supposed to be doing. But I'm going to leave the Snapcasters in because if I don't have Rest in Peace and can trade it, then we're going to be in good shape. I would like to play first. Uh, I think I've got a mulligan this hand because I don't have any, like, hate piece. These cost six mana. And, like, I don't have, like, a main slayer range or anything like that. So I think we're going to ship this. And we're going to keep this one because we have rest in peace. So we get the serum visions on one, which is nice. We're going to put that on the bottom. I think we're going to put this on the bottom, put this on top. Insolent Neonate. Um, probably gonna get a hollow fountain. And hopefully we hit another land drop for this click. Cause then we can click ourselves, get further up here to mana, just looking for a way to win. All right. I think I'm going to try to block this Ballista. Like, either way, this Ballista is going to trade for this click, and I might as well just save myself the damage. And I will click, I will probably click myself. And I'm going to get rid of my path because settle the wreckage. Like, we'll probably need settle if things get bad. I'm going to get rid of this green source. I doubt, they have very, I doubt they have a basic green land, and all their green cards are what would kill this rest in peace. And, like, this just cuts them off of uh, getting to cast... Um, Getting a cast Vengevine. All right. So now I'm probably just going to settle the wreckage and just get to a point where we can start firing up this colonnade and ending this game. We just want to get this one over with. I guess I don't have to pull that one up. Let's just see what's in their exile pile. All right, let's keep it up. On the draw, 
I don't really think this is a play draw kind of matchup. Everything's kind of the same thing here. I'm gonna go grab my slippers. I'll be right back. I'm gonna just submit. Yep, we're going to keep this. This hand's pretty solid. We have backup in case the rest in piece isn't quite fast enough. Pretty solid hand. Bridge vine, venge vine, yeah. Bridge from above, venge vine, yeah. Get me. Oh, God, this is a good start. Oh, just a zombie, okay. So I think I'm going to cycle this illumination. So I'm just going to go get a planes with this. Cycle this end of turn. Go get planes. Rest in peace. All right, there's one. If we can, hopefully they miss here, so that we can just get catch this venge vine. Because then even if they blow this up, I doubt they're going to miss there the second land though. Okay, so I'm taking six, seven, eight. Versus taking four. And I'm kind of just in the same spot next turn, but they can do more things. They also just sack their neonate. Probably have to block and hope to peel, I think. I think that's our game plan here. Walk and hope to miracle. Discards Bread from Vol, discards Grave Crawler. Now block here, take five, go to eight. What if I block here? Take I think I'm just going to block this one, I think, because I think I'm dead either way next turn. Oh, there's the Lyra, which means we're dead. <sighs> Close one. I, need, I needed, like, one more piece of interaction. Like I needed a path or something. If I'd have hit a path there, we, we might have been able to stabilize behind the Settle the Wreckage. Like if we could have, if we needed one, if we got one more spell and curved spell into settle into Lyra, but we would have needed like exactly path because we probably had the field to get our path. So, them's the beats though. I think I was pretty, pretty close either way. No, let me put the deck list up here. Everyone's having a good day today.
Excuse me. I was freaking out. Can't handle this. Uh, we're going to keep this one. It's a solid hand. We can figure out what we're doing and cycle this illumination or hold it. I think, oh shoot, I should I should have played my colonnade. I think we're likely going to cycle one of them now. They hit a miracle. So we're playing the mirror. Yeah, we're definitely going to cycle one of these illuminations in a turn. We just got to hit our land drops. Uh, you live until next time. Step. I'm gonna hit the land drops and play quickly. Oh wow, they missed the land. I'm going to keep both of these illuminations. I think. I think we're gonna get really far ahead, staying up on cards. But we also might want to like try to do the cryptic bounce. But if we cryptic bounce, we're still like keeping ahead on. So we're gonna end up cycling and keeping trying to keep ahead that way. We're not going to do that. Having these illuminations is probably a pretty big game in this mirror. Let's go get an island. We have a pretty blue heavy hand considering our two white spells are just no good here. Until next end step. It's my beta counter spell. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We got a discard, but we can easily get rid of this terminus and not feel that bad about it. It's it's kind of like a non-resource. Vendillion click. I think we're just going to counter draw. I could also just like bounce a land because we don't really need cards. And I'm not really worried about Jace. I'm worried about like Teferi because Teferi untapped counter spell gets rid of our detention sphere. So I think I'm actually going to counter this and then bounce a land. Because we just don't need, like, cards isn't the problem. Like, Teferi's the problem. Because even if they just play Jace here, then we just go Colonnade, smoke it. Which, like, I'm pretty, I'm pretty okay with. What I'm a bit nervous about, I'd like to hit another land drop. So I might just cycle this illumination because our hand's so clunky. Because I would like to be able to go like one, two, three, four, five. I'd like to hit a, like land six, then go be able to go detention sphere to fairy and cryptic, whatever you do. And I'm going to need to hit my next land drop to do that, which we did. But it's a tap land, which is a little, a little annoying. But. So if we hit an untapped land, we should be in pretty good shape because, all right, there's another Jace. And it's still the same thing here. If we hit an untapped land, we're going to be able to de-sphere this with Cryptic Backup. We didn't do that. Put on the bottom, put on the bottom. I think we're going to try to end a turn bounce this. 
we are definitely a little like low. I feel like we're now losing the resource battle, but if they go like brainstorm play Teferi, we can go like counterbalance. So I'm, we might have fallen behind a little bit. Maybe the counterbalance was too aggressive. We return target opponent rat to draw a card. So let's deal with this Jace. Because we don't want to play Detention Sphere when we have our Jace in play. This leaves us like wide open to get just absolutely destroyed by a Teferi. Uh, counter target spell, draw a card. And now we just kind of have to hold our breath. For Teferi, and if there's not Teferi here, we should be in, we should be in okay shape because we can lead with Search for his Kanta. If that gets countered, we can slam Jace. Oh god, they hit a Teferi. They hit Teferi. <laughs> Gross. The good thing is, is if all works out, which I don't think it's going to. We go Jace, Jace into search, deal with Teferi, or Jace, Jace into brainstorm into uh, whatever it is, deal with Teferi. But I don't think the way this game is going, I would seriously doubt that's going to work out. It might work out. So now we're going to have a little bit of an old-fashioned Jace off. He gets the fetch off of his. So, the nice thing, I do have a click and a timely to pressure there, Jace. And I've got a search and got some colonnades. So, I don't know if we're in a good spot here. I don't think we are because they're Jacing first. Like, they brainstorm four times, we brainstorm once. And we know that we're our top two cards are no good. So, we kind of just have to hope to get lucky here. Field. Hopefully they feel this now so we can shuffle. Do we get to untap? Do we get to untap? Ooh, they're going to feel this, I think. Field room would be so nice. Please field me. No, they're not going to. They're going to just jam another to fairy god. And they're going to draw a card. All right, let's brainstorm. Get these back. Play this. I have to get into one of these planeswalkers, but I think the best way to do that is to probably try to click them at some point, and maybe we can figure it out. Put a little bit of pressure on them. I can click them now. 
while it's likely going to resolve. But I don't think I don't think I'm actually gonna do that. I think we're gonna try we're gonna try to fight it on their turn. I can also click myself, like Okay, so click resolves. We're gonna see what they target. Targeting hubby DW. So let's path this. And then I think I'm going to click them. I just want to get something in play. And they might be able to like, they might be able to, they may have like an answer to this. They have plenty of answers to this. Path, path, detention sphere. I think I'm gonna take their detention sphere because I think I need this search to pull me out here and they can go cryptic bounce my search if they want to. I think I'm just gonna take this sphere. And that might be loose, but I gotta find some way to keep up with these two planeswalkers and search for his Kanta is likely the way that I'm gonna do it. My phone's probably gonna let me keep what I have. If I had to guess. I take Jace. So if they go to field, if they bounce my Jace, I need to fetch with that on the stack. They're going to Miracle, a Terminus. Okay. That sucks. Okay. Because they're probably just going to bounce this. They hit a Colonnade, too. They've got Snap. Well, no, they knew that. So they have Snap, Path, Path, whatever they hit off the Colonnade. Ancestral Visions, okay. Or they hit off the click. He probably should just bounce my Jays. I mean, yeah, he definitely should brainstorm first because you're doing that, but more than likely, this Jace, or the, like, the, you don't need the extra cards if you're brainstorming, I think. Search for themselves. Okay, well, we're gonna be able to feel the flip side of that. Another Ancestral Visions. And they drew, okay. And they opt, opted. So we know these are still floating around their top, whatever, four cards. They probably, put, they probably put one of these in the bottom, if I had to guess. A counter spell here would be really nice, but they probably have double path. Always yield, yes. We will flip it. Okay, that's, that's not bad. Let's start with this. Probably can get rid of this. Well, I want an answer to their colonnade and an answer to this, so I should keep the settle. So let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. Play field. Fire up this colonnade and we're gonna to go to Praytown, USA. We're gonna get into this Jace. They had to keep, I mean, they probably still have path snap, path in their top couple cards, but we gotta force some kind of an issue here. But maybe it was better, it might've been better to just like draw, try to, you know, play with Escanta. And now I've got to let this go. Yeah, I think I was a little too aggressive because I have to be able to field this colonnade. Yeah, that was stupid. That was not good. We can leave our fetch land around, which is not nothing. So those ancestral visions are not good for the home team. I probably can't get away with settling this colonnade. 
because we figure they have Snapcaster Mage. If they tap low enough, then I might be able to. But they also can just Teferi took this down. They are Fate Sealing, targeting themselves. They're probably just like, ah, I don't need cards at this point. We'll get our own to fairy. Keep our fetch land around. Do a snapcaster mage. All right, let's brainstorm. We might be clawing our way back into this. All right, let's get rid of this settle. Let's get rid of this timely. Shuffle these away. Let's get a hollow fountain. I think I'm going to tuck their Teferi. <clears throat> Wicked intense game. Negate this. Another cryptic. Oh, am I going to be just like absolutely screwed because I didn't play a land to go snap negate? Probably. Ugh. Now I have to play this and go up with it, or it's going to get murked by their um, colonnade. Oh yeah, I got totally wrecked because I was just a moron and didn't pick up with it. Yeah, we're good here. I'm going to scoop this game up because like, my opponent's going to get get ahead here. Like, They've got just too much going on, and we can just... Move this game. I should have played my land. I just completely zoned out there. If I'd have played my land, I would have been able to get Jason Teferi in play. I could have ticked up with my J with my Teferi and had double path slash mana leak up. They would have flipped their search and we would have had to fight over the colonnade. So it would have been it would have been it would have been interesting. But I definitely probably just muffed that a little bit. To say the least. So I guess we're supposed to bring both of these in. Just cut two paths. Keep enough paths to play, but probably can also bring in my timely. My sideboard does not look super cohesive, but that's because we're doing new stuff. I'll cut one more path. We'll keep enough paths in. We're gonna bring in disdainful strokes. We've got enough ways to deal with the angels. Keep one miser's path. I think all the other cards are just probably better. But I could be wrong. I got out. I think I got outplayed. Well, I don't know if I got outplayed or if they just landed a Jace first. Like, they just snuck a Jace through. I would like to play first. They have Ancestral Visions, which is a little nerve-wracking. I'm going to play Colonnade. So, probably can just get a tapped Hallowed Fountain. Good bluff Spell Snare, but I we want both of those. Go 
it on the bottom. Well, we want lands. So I think I'm going to put this on the bottom, and I'm going to put Jace on top. And then we can play Search plus um, Dispel next turn. And then, like, not obviously not just jam our Jace on four, but at least maybe try to be able to set that up. I'm going to get an island. If they go to Tension Sphere on this search, I'm just going to Jace Brainstorm. Just get it into play, start doing stuff. That's not going to happen. Oh uh, no, we're just gonna draw that. We need lands, so we shouldn't be greedy. I don't think I'm gonna do anything even on their turn. Like I'm not gonna send this click out here to bait like a cryptic counterbalance. Just kind of like lose a lot of tempo that way, and it might not be about that, but. Right, we're hitting a land this turn. So let's bottom this. Okay, we hit another land. Now I can get like click plus dispel back up. So maybe that's another wrong thing that I, like I should play like play into the turns where they can't do something plus dispel me. I don't know. A lot going on. The illumination is nice. Illumination is going to do a little bit of everything. Draw some cards. It's a good. It's a good bait spell too. At the end of their turn. So now I think I'm just going to cast this. They kind of have to counter this. I guess they don't have to. And we're going to flip this search because it's just another land which we're looking for. I don't really want to see our visions in case I have to Field of Ruin. Am I going to have to Field of Ruin? Probably not. I doubt they're just going to go like fire that up. Put both of these on the bottom. So we're going to start like getting a little more aggressive with our with our uh, cryptic commands. And I'm probably gonna like go to click them at the end of their turn, clear the way, and then go like cryptic, bounce a colony, draw a card. Let's play this first. Because if they have nothing, then I can just tap out in Azcanta. But if they have something, then I can just let Azcanta go. Because if they counter this, then I'll do the Azcanta. Counter target spell, draw a card. I kind of just want to now counter target, counter this and draw a card. And I'm going to do that. We don't get a card out of our Azcanta, but which just kind of suck. I think I'm just going to get a card out of his canta. I think we're going to let this go. But, like, we trade two for ones. My like, hand's really clunky, so I think I'm just going to get a cryptic out of it. I could also go counter this, return this, and then they don't get their field. Yeah, why don't we try that? Counter target spell, return target permanent to its owner's hand. Counter this, click gets in play. They don't get their cryptic. Target them. They lose a land. So 
So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we just take nothing, and I can play Jace and have Cryptic Command out. Let's leave this open just in case. Brainstorm. Let's put, have I already made, I don't know if I've made a land drop. Let's put this down here, this down here. I did make a land drop. I mean, we can get in there. I think we're in good shape now. I do need to pay attention to the clock, but there's the ghost quarter. We're definitely just countering this and hoping they didn't hit something. Counter target, spell, draw a card. It does kind of feel nice to get these cryptic commands out of here. They did hit a counter spell. Damn it. Well, now if they tuck something, their, their dude's going to die. So, like, we'll take that trade, I guess. Especially when we can illuminations and, like, cert. Like, we, we're, we're definitely in a decent spot. Okay. So they plus it. Untap. We get to put pressure on this, which is good. Draw cards. Negate, click, timely. I'd like to be able to shuffle away this timely, I think. Let's put this click on top. I'm going to play my search. Attack this to fairy. I guess I could have, like, fielded this, but... Hopefully we can bury them in cards when they go to try to deal with this Jace. Like, they've got Detention Sphere plus something here. Yeah, we'll let this go. We get a shuffle off of our Jace, which is nice. We definitely wanted to get rid of those. Those cards just weren't super great. And they're down to land, which isn't trivial. Opt, okay. I think we're in a good spot. I think we're ahead this game. I'm just going to jam this. Let's negate this. Dispel. Alright, so let's cast this. We might hit a Dispel of our own. We didn't. We did get two cards. So now they have Snapcaster. We take the click. Okay. Alright. It's interesting. No, we want that. Yes, we will flip this because we're gonna we want another land. Then we're gonna tuck there to fairy. And then probably look to field them. Been a pretty sweet set. I was trying to stay ahead on time, but I'd like to win. I think more than that. I probably should have maybe done something with my Jace. No, oh, I shouldn't have played that land. Let's get rid of Field and Teferi. We will pass. Now we can mana leak something, or 
As we can as Kanta in Mana League also, which is pretty nice. So let's we're gonna get a card. I think we're gonna take Path just to keep our Teferi, keep our Planeswalkers intact. Oh, I don't have any more lands. I'm out of basics. Okay. Did not think about that one. <clears throat> yeah, we're just going to let this go because we can't mana leak it. I could flash in Snapcaster, but I don't really want to do that. I put a card on the bottom. We're just going to move to our turn. Whoa. Let's draw three cards. All right, we don't need. We do need the colony. So let's put this back. Let's put back Illuminations plus. <clears throat> and now if they bounce this then like that's fine because they're not drawing any cards and we're just like slowly burying them should have untapped a field of ruin there because I could field the celestial colonnade without using a card okay Mana like that. And I'm just going to illuminations at the end of the turn. And then we're definitely going to try to take this Jace down with this colonnade on our turn. Yeah, especially now that we hit a dispel. So. Should have tapped my fields because I was going to get rid of one of those. So we should be grinding them out here. And then I think we're going to go up with our Jace. Yeah, so let's just look to end this game. I think we're in control of it. Put Jace the Mind Sculptor on the bottom. I can go one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so we're going to not. Jace the Mind Sculptor on the bottom. Yes. Okay, they scooped it up. That's nice of them. I appreciate them playing that. Once they saw that we were starting to fate seal, they probably knew that like the game was likely over. So the timely reinforcements were not good. I messed up there. Let's bring in a couple more paths just to protect our planeswalkers. That's something I learned from sideboarding there. The paths. The timelies are not good in the mirror. You know, you think they'd be nice in a control mirror, something that plays creatures, but they just don't present enough creatures. So that was, that was a punt on my part. It was kind of dumb now that I think back on it. Oh. Keep my hand. I think I want to just keep keepable. Keep anything that starts with, you know, seven cards, lands, cast things. Ancestral Visions is big. I think we're going to go fetch Hollow Fountain. And we're going to Serum Visions, because we just don't have a lot of interaction. Instead of just playing it slow. I think I mean, this might project that we're a little desperate. We don't need any more lands. So let's put Wolf Rose on the bottom. I feel like this Illuminations is just a better Ancestral Visions. Let's keep up Appearances. Always yield. I 
could see cycling the first illumination. We're definitely going to like, I think we're going to try to click our opponent to the end of their turn. Just to like, at least have something on the board. All right. You got to search. Search is good. Search is really good. The counter spell. No. So now I think I'm just going to jam Jace and brainstorm. They're going to get to draw three cards, but like we're going to have the first planeswalker in play. They could go like to fairy minus, which would suck. But if they do that, I think we're gonna have just have another Jason on deck. <clears throat> I could have played like the crypt. Could have like sat there with cryptic command or negate, but I think it's likely that they have a way to deal with that. Okay, so they jace us. Everybody's jacing everybody. All right, let's put back two lands. I probably should have kept the hollow found to be able to cycle this illumination because like you know being able to do that is probably pretty important while because my hand's so like so heavy being able to do that plus crypt command is important like I'm probably not gonna try to do that now we're gonna make sure to not try to cryptic this colonnade if they go for that So like the first person to find like a dispel. They're in a pretty good spot. But we are gonna be able to go like Jace plus negate. This is fine. They're gonna have a, they're gonna look at one of our lands. Put a card on the bottom. I put a land on the bottom, that's odd. Oh, almost clicked through my upkeep there. I don't have an upkeep style, I usually do, but. Let's put back Celestial Colonnade. Then let's put back Field of Ruin. Shock myself. And then we will discard probably like. Okay. It's nice we get a shuffle. Probably just going to discard a Lyra at this point. The game's not really about Lyra right now. If they try to, if they go like cryptic counter bounce, I'm gonna go cryptic or bounce draw. I'm gonna go cryptic counter bounce. So counter target spell, return target permit. Just get their Jace off the board. We don't need cards. Like, we have plenty of those. Let's just jockey a little bit for position. Now they can go Colonnade. They can fire up Colonnade and hit my uh, and hit my Jace, but then we get to play another Jace after that. So maybe it was a little greedy to do that because but they have to have it's pretty bold of them, I think, to go for that. Okay, but they're not going to. So let's negate this. If they then fight this, we colonnade that we plus our Jace colonnade their Jace. Okay, great. We 
We're just leaning on our opponent at this point. So they're going to plus on theirs, okay? Let's look at our top of our library. A disdainful stroke on the bottom. Or maybe I shouldn't have done this. Because I can't quite. Yeah, this was stupid. No. Yeah, this wasn't good to do. Yeah, that was loose for me. Because I couldn't go, like, I want to be able to deal with a Planeswalker of theirs. And I can't attack their Jace and deal with a Planeswalker. I think the best way to win this is just, like, hit land drops and then be able to do a lot of things in one turn. I'm going to cycle this because my hand's just getting gluttoned with stuff. No, we want that. We do want to flip this. So, one, two, three, four, five. I think it's time to. F Problem is, this doesn't work. It's so bad. So, let's draw cards. Let's try to find a Teferi to bounce their Jace. This is a Detention Sphere, but that doesn't quite do that. So, let's put Search, Detention Sphere. Play this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we can have two counter spells up to just try to hit their Jace, which is probably enough to. Well, let's just keep ahead on cards for now. Eventually, we're going to hit land drops and we're going to be able to like get in with this Jace or play a Teferi and get their Jace off the board. Then Dillion Click. Wow, that just like stone resolves. I guess we could have like tried to fight over it with a negate with cryptic command. Which maybe that was good to do. Cuz now they just take my snapcaster mage and then they can fire up their colonnade, but if I hit off this search, then that's not good. I should have I should have fought over that, I think. Maybe like tried to go counter bounce again. Yeah, I definitely should have gone like tried to fight over that with counter bounce. That was stupid. I was just getting a little. I was just getting a little. I took negate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. We're not gonna compound our mistake. Now I can try to bounce this Jace right now, which I think I'm going to do. Because then we have Disdainful Stroke plus... Um, we have Disdainful Stroke plus Dispel. Just like play the Snap, bounce this Jace and draw a card. Return target pawn, return. <clears throat> so now they have to fight with something that's like, that gets around disdainful stroke, which logic not doesn't, which is cool. Cryptic command. So let's disdainful stroke this. They tapped their island on accident. I wonder if I should let that resolve. So this likely means we're going to get rid of their Jace no matter what because of the colonnade. We just have to... Okay, so... Oh, we're, we're getting rid of the Jace anyway. So now... Brainstorm. Okay, we hit a mana leak. So we're going to put this search back, put this detention sphere back. 
Attack with Snapcast Mage, play land, play Baneslayer Angel. Oh shit, I moved through my turn. God darn it. That's not good. Now they just have, well I guess we can play our own Colonnade, fire up our Colonnade and try to block this. It's just not having another stop. It's going to take, they're going to need a lot of interaction to deal with this. Yeah, we're just going to let this go. Yeah, like I, I just messed up by clicking through my turn there. And it comes into play taps, and so now they need two, I need two counter spells. But if they go to slam this Jace, then they need Dispel to keep it, and then they're tapped out. Definitely in a hard spot because I didn't have another stop there. Oh, okay. I'm up on time, which is good. So let's attack for two. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten mana. So probably just gonna play a Jace. Leave up my field of ruin. Okay, so let's put these, this back, this back. All right, then we'll just pass. I couldn't play if I played if I just made a land drop last turn. I'd be in such good shape. I think I'm gonna like let them hit this as Kanta. I just want to deal with this, this right here, this colonnade. If they go to fire that thing up, oh shoot! They can just kill this. We're playing fast and loose tonight. I forgot this didn't go up. Just trying to play quickly, which is going to be the death of me. Alright, well we will just take an Illumination. Cycle the Illumination. It would have been sweet if this game would have come to like a natural conclusion. Oh, okay, so now we get to fight over this. They can play their own Jace. Snapcaster Mage. Targeting. Mana Leak. Okay. So get this, but I think we can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... One, two, three, four, five, six. We're just gonna un we're just gonna jam this Bane Slayer Angel. I don't think that they have a counter spell. They would have used it there. I'm fairly certain. We're gonna untap our field, untap our colonnade, hold back. That tilt. Let this ancestral visions go. We're looking to just keep our Teferi protected. Trade Snapcasters. Mana leak this. They mana leak back. 
to dispel. Okay, they probably tuck our Teferi. If they do that, we can then... They're going to draw a card. Okay. All right, then. Draw a card. No, we can't colonnade that thing down, unfortunately. Let's play this Lyra. Pass the turn. We get to untap some lands. We get like Crypt Command, Snapcaster Mage, Lodge, not up. I'm still up 30 seconds if it comes down to that. Resident Sleeper. How's it going, Tannen? This is getting fast and loose due to time here. All right, counter target spell. Do I want to draw a card or do I want to? I probably want to like, I probably want to bounce there to fairy. Uh, counter target spell, return target permanent. Let's see if we can get away with that. We're not going to be able to activate this can't more than likely anyways. Dispel. Do I have a dispel? I do. So let's logic knot this. Focus, don't read. Alright, let's go this, this, this. They have four mana. Let's get rid of the field. All right, you got a dispel, buddy. Dispel this negate. Is that gonna work? Come on. Okay, nice. That should be pretty good. Yeah, punishing for not. Yeah, punishing not using planeswalker. That one felt good. Oh. All right, I'm gonna get another cup of coffee. I need it after that shit. So I'll be right back. All right, we're back. Been looking at your podcast. We got your podcast is back, Dan. And I talked to Rudy at an at an open about it. Just popped in quick. Nothing super. Um, nothing super formal. Just told him I liked it. Appreciated. You guys are back doing it. It's control me. There's a lot going on. I think I think I was like firmly ahead until I clicked through my turn there and didn't make a land drop. And then I then I kind of like fell behind the eight ball, and then I don't know through something just clawed my way back into it. But but it is there's a lot going on. I think my goal as like for playing modern is to be able to pilot like 
the best fair deck at any given point, whether it's like a Thoughtseize deck or a Snapcaster deck, probably. And then be, if none of those are good, be able to play Ironworks. I don't really, I'm not like a super fan of playing humans, and I think that humans is like, I think humans is like a dog to this deck. I think it's a dog to the Hardened Scales deck, which is starting to pick up. So I'm not super excited about that deck at the moment. I think I'd like to be able to play my choice of a fair deck and then be able to just play Ironworks if none of those are good. I think that's where I'm at in Modern. I keep this. It's a little messy. We got the old six mana Terminus. Okay, speaking of hardened scales. I should have known my opponent's name was Blake Moth Nexus. But Jace is a nice draw there. How do you think Shadows of Vengeance and Hard Scales are becoming more popular? I, I think Shadows like pretty medium right now, which you know makes me sad, but that is just the world we live in. It's like not very good against humans. Bring back Green Black Rock. I'll try that deck. I mean, I don't think the Assassin's Trophy is like the end all be all, but. It is going to help out. All right, so we got to, like, mind our P's and Q's now. Especially now they have a sack outlet. We don't want this to ferry. So, play this. They sack this on it here. That's three. Put a counter on this. Three, so this becomes four, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we can't we can't even really move here. I could just hit this ink moth nexus right now. And then be able to cycle my illuminations. Just don't want to get poisoned out of the game. Then we can play our Sweet. Four mana. Hopefully they don't attack it. Oh, they have an island. It's interesting. Throwing a guess. Okay, that probably means they have counter spells. Throwing a guess. Oof. Proliferate. This is eight damage. So they don't even have to attack me next turn. Like they don't have to attack the Jace next turn, that's what I mean. We might still be dead. But we probably need one more interactive spell. Like Snapcaster Mage. Snapcaster Mage doesn't do anything. So we're pretty much dead as a doorknob. Four, eight. Because this is five, nine, thirteen. Maybe they just won't go for it. So I'm going to target the Ravager, I think. They could just sack this, sack this. Like, we're dead anyways, but they, there's a couple different... This might not have been the best way to induce my opponent to make a mistake. Because they just go, like, sack this here, move this onto here, and then, like... Yeah, I think I should have targeted the hanger back walker. Yeah, this was not good for me. Eight, put it on here, because then that's three, six. All right. Let's see if they miraculously don't go for it. Because theoretically, if they go, Pendle Haven that, okay. Put counters, path this. We get another turn. But it doesn't appear their opponent's going to do that. 
All right, GG's opponent. There was probably a way I could have sequenced that to like to maybe induce an issue. Or like get them to do something. I don't know. I think either way, no matter what I did, I'm pretty sure they had me. I could have targeted the Steel Overseer. It just sacked the Steel Overseer. Five counters, proliferate. Yeah. Unfortunately. So I don't even think that I'm supposed to bring in the Lyras and the Baneslayer Angels because they just go bigger than them. I kind of want to cut my counter spells, my searches. Probably can shave on like a Teferi and a Jace. I, I don't know. I don't really know how to sideboard against this deck here. I know I want my Wraths. I know I probably want Click Interacts in Combat. We don't have as many cards as Snapcaster back. A little nervous when I struggle to actually like win the game or protect my enchantments because they're probably bringing in Nature's Claim. Tension Sphere is probably kind of clunky. So maybe I'm supposed to like just cut these cards, bring in Dispel, and then have all of my ways to win the game. I'm not sure. Let's wing it. Does Dispel just the Dispel just counters the cards that they would use to kill my enchantments, which probably means like I have to make sure I have an enchantment, which might be a little risky. Maybe bring like one more counter spell. Maybe a couple more counter spells in the play. A little uncomfortable to have a sideboard. These also might be small ball. The, the timelies. Probably can keep one. Nah, let's keep it just. Because Detention Sphere is good if they don't have a Ravager. I don't know. We're just going to wing it here. I'm not super sure exactly what's going on. I'm pretty excited for the new standard spoilers. I kind of want to play, like, even though it's not like on Guild or whatever, I want to play a blue-white control deck with like Jumpstart cards and like Nexus of Fate. Well, heater. All right. Well, at least we can interact. I don't think I don't think you can mulligan this hand. Well, we definitely can't mulligan the hand now. I mean, even though we cap, but the hand's just super duper now. And hopefully, this Stony buys us some time. That's interesting. They probably have like a counter spell, but or a, but we're just gonna run this in there. I think I could also just counter spell their next play. Yeah, let's not let's not give them the benefit of the doubt here. I'm sure this is like a nature's claim or a spell pierce, and they probably chose not to do anything to represent that. So let's just kind of make them, you know, piss their turn away. Might be worth countering that because. Assuming that they do have a way to get this off the board, it's not good for us. We also can just oust it if they go to kill this thing. Okay. So this is going to be me Hello Fountain. I kind of just want to deal with this Ravager. That sucks. I could also just like field and oust this Ravager because if this goes to crap, then it is likely going to lead with Ravager. I don't really want to get poisoned out of the game either. But then I can't hold up Mana Leak. Eh, let's just wait one more turn. I think I'm going to oust this Ravager, though. 
Because, like, everything just goes bad if this... Oh, it's a sorcery. Okay. Learn something new every day. Stir the pot, my friend. Probably should have also impacted the board so that I could play Jace. Now I can't even play Jason Plus. So I'll probably end up just Nexusing, or Field of Ruining this Nexus. If they get rid of this, they get rid of this. I'm not doing anything else anyways. i got to start to do some stuff. And if I hit a land, then I can go like, even if they blow this up, I can go Alice plus Sphere. I'm going to plus this on myself. Oh, Stubborn Denial. Oh, yeah, they play this Stubborn Denial. That's kind of a blowout. The old Force Spike Stubborn Denial. There's an Ink Moth they drew last turn. Whoa. All right, well, we're going to end up D-Sphere in the Karn and ousting the token. Get rid of this. Oof. This is all gotten out of control. <clears throat> I probably should have led with that. I'm just not playing around this stubborn denial. Though, maybe getting the 4 4 off the board is probably more important because I'm at 12. Do we have a botanical sanctum? I think the fact they didn't make a token there might mean that this Stony Silence is about to get blown up. Or they have another Karn. This is a Walking Blista. Or Hanger Back. Okay. One of those Terminuses would be sweet. One of those there Terminus things. Alright. Um, let's play our land so that doesn't we don't get stubbed again. I don't think we can die next turn. My opponent's as an unknown card. They're going to hit me for two. They're going to hit me for two, three, four, five. Put me at four. They can't blister me out of the game. So let's draw some cards. Okay. That's a good one to hit. We didn't hit a Terminus, but if we're not going to hit a Terminus, then that's about as good as it gets. We want the Crypt Command too, so we shouldn't put the... F I guess we should have thought about what we are going to do with the Fetch Land, but... Stir the Pot, sure. <clears throat> Puts Pendlehaven. So if we can... Reveal the top two. You can have G's. Probably ancient stirrings, as bad as that sounds. Should get this Karn thing out here. They have two good cards. In <laughs> they missed. Oh, I put a hanger back walker. Okay. Pendlehaven, or Ink Moths. Let's see what they do here. They might just send everything at Jace. This goes at Jace. This goes at Jace. This goes at Jace. This goes at me. This goes at me. So we can path the Hangerback Walker to keep our Jace around. Which I think we're going to do. Unless they have another stub. I guess they can then use the Pendlehaven and get us anyway, so that was stupid. They can just Pendlehaven, get the Jace out of there. Yeah, I didn't think about that. 
And now the cryptic command is underneath. Ugh. Oh, no, there it is. Okay. Oh, that was loose. That was just loose all the way around. So let's play this brainstorm. We're looking for a way just to clear the board here. Not playing very well today, which is a little annoying. So we don't need this. We don't need this. Play this land. I should have definitely got some killed something that was like coming after my life total. So now they're going to send all these at Jace probably. So if they attack me, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, they can attack me with everything and then get a Ballista and kill me. That's just something I didn't even pay. To, like, I'm not playing very well today. Like, I didn't even think about that with this Ballista. <sighs> All right, well, that means we're not going to get Ballista out of the game. Let's go in there. All right, we're going to let it go. Would have liked to hit some sort of way to clear the board, but we haven't done that yet. These stubborn denials are pretty sweet out of this deck. I wonder if they still play um, whatever the card is. You can have a, an Arcbound Worker. Animation module is going to beat me. I wonder if they still have. Um... Hang on, water share. Um. I guess I should probably counter this. No, I'm... They don't have any mana up. They haven't played a land yet. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what else we're saving this for. Like, maybe a Stubborn Denial, but Stubborn Denial is so cheap that if my opponent turns it on then like they're going to be able to counter pretty much anything I do anyways. And this means that if I hit like a spot removal spell, then I might be able to like get rid of it. Well, they also have a walking bliss in exile. So I probably shouldn't have done that because I should just let that resolve, got a cryptic tap. And then when they go to grab their ballista, mana leak the ballista. So yeah, we're just having our, we have our head square up our ass today. This Karn has been just such a beating. That Stubborn Denial. Stubborn Denial is so good. When Stubborn Denial trades like for so much more mana like that, it is just really good. We drew a field. So I probably should just go like upkeep, tap your team, and draw. Because I could draw like another weird counter spell. No, nope. we didn't have to stop the upkeep. I'm not even sure that's right to do. Okay, so there's our land. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Put a card you own. Card you own. What are you putting in there? Probably walking blister. Put a card with a silver counter. Which one do you put it in? Walking blister. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They've already played a land. I probably just have to tap draw.
we because like holding this to counter the ballista doesn't really do anything. Oh, they can just make it a five five. I always forget that kind of stuff. Move that thing here. Well, we might hit a counter spell and gain some life. We can't activate it. I always like haven't played with Stony Silence in a long, long time. We have another one though. So probably inside a combat. Once the attackers are oh, I don't have any stops. Gosh. I have stops here. Why didn't I get the other turn to activate that? Bleh. We just got beat up also. I'm not playing very well today, but like this is we we are just getting like taken to the cleaners. We need like illumination into Supreme Verdict now. Yeah, we're just dead. Yeah, I really played that game pretty poorly. Which is a little discouraging. I haven't played with Stony Silence in a couple years, so I definitely forget what it did there. But, like, I definitely could have played that just so much better. I just had my head up it. Which happens. I mean, I got the coffee, though, so we're like, you know, we get coffee, so things are destined to turn around. How are you doing today, Griffin? Are you excited for your Assassin's Trophy card? Pretty good. Excited to blow up some Urza's Towers. Drop oh, Terminus into Lewis. Officer, this man stole my Jaces. Yes, I did. Um, I think Opt is like a pretty poor card, to tell you the truth, Freedmania, and it is like only good when you set up Terminus. So that might mean that we shouldn't have four Terminuses with the Illuminations. Like I, I watched my friend play with Illumination this weekend at Detroit, or last weekend, and I was just really impressed with it the whole time. So I think I think Opt's just a really bad card. So, like, I would like to not play Opt. We're going to mulligan. We've only got one land. Instead of blow up some Urza's Towers. Hopefully it helps out there. We're going to keep this begrudgingly. We're probably going to end up, unless our the top card's Dynamite, we're going to Serum Visions. We're probably going to fetch top card. If I keep this top card, there's just so many ways I just die. But, like, without this card, I don't know if this hand's going to win. So I'm just going to put this on top, play this, and pass. Three terminus, one supreme verdict. Where it's at? Yeah, I, I just grabbed a deck here. Play four off and two, two illuminations. All right, so it looks like we're gonna play against uh, play against some Jund. Hopefully, Phew. Um, let's put this on top. Let's put this underneath it. Those are some good cards. I think the cost of deck building, yeah, so that's right. That might be right there. I think Opt is just such a shit magic card, though. Tarmogoyf. Alright. So. Oh, I don't have a stop in the upkeep anymore. I could go and click, try to hit a Liliana. Which might have been the right thing to do there. Or, like, I, I hope to ambush this Tarmogoyf in combat and then get rid of something. Yeah, no, I meant to have a stop in the upkeep, Rafi. I just took it off here. I played a control mirror and, like, was low on time. And put took off some stops. I don't need these stops either. I put these on for another quick match here. I really hope I get to just ambush. Okay.
having a little bit of trouble. I really want to ditch my land to hope they ditch a land. I get to eat this Tarmogoyf. But then even if I eat this Tarmogoyf, I still have to deal with the treetop village with my Liliana. So the Teferi is probably a little clunky. So let's ditch this. I can also field this, path this, and then play Jace on an open board, which is nice. So I think that's what we're going to do. And we're just going to hope we don't get Bloodbraid Elfed. Why can't I feel? Like I kind of want to now play Jace. Oh, I can't feel because it shuffles it away. Oh, we drew a good one. Jace is not in my hand. Yes, you are right there. Well, now I want to feel this red source so that we don't get blood braid elf. So let's just feel the red source in their draw step. We get little quirks of playing with the deck. Do I want to field this red source or do I want to click them? I probably want to just click my opponent. How are we winning this, Dylan? I don't know how we're going to win this. How's it going, Pedorgas? We're going to play Teferi on like a decent board. And that's the plan. Which is I probably shouldn't have done this into the Edict. But if he keeps this and Edicts this, then I can go just land Teferi as long as the board is decent. So let's get rid of this Blood Red Elf. So I think my opponent's best play is to go like Edict, play Ravine. Actually, I mean, if... So there's that. We can't minus, we can't nug the Bob and Ghost Quarter of the Ravine. If they take it up, we're ditching this Ghost Quarter. We're going to rip the land like an absolute savage. And we're going to attack this to Fairy Tick Up and then deal with this Raging Ravine. Bonacachu, you missed Death Shadow? Yeah, we're playing some new stuff. Death Shadow's, like, not super at the moment. So I would like to learn... I would like to learn a couple other decks. I'd like to be able to play every fair deck in the format, and then Ironworks. It's kind of like my modern magic goal. Nice. So they play Bob. We just hope they didn't rip like an absolute monster of a hand card. Okay, so now we gotta make sure we untap our ghost quarter here. Uh, untap ghost quarter like Hollow Fountain. Saw Ben Camera. Ben on camera playing, but he lost blue light. That sucks. Ben's a very good player. Draws Blood Red Elf. That would not be good. They drew a Blood Red Elf. They drew a Blood Red Elf. That is just absolutely vomit inducing. So we're going to ditch our Colonnade. We tossed this game about six ways to Sunday. We're going to be 100% above the rim here. Yeah, he has number one on trophies now. Yeah. Yeah, he's just a very good player. He, I saw what he posted about... Um, uh, we got to ditch our colonnade so that we can 
play this land and deal with this uh, Liliana. Pitches the Bloodstained Mire. I saw him post like some stats from Whirr. Like that guy is just an animal. That Bloodbraid Elf. Into a Thoughtseize. So now we can have six. I don't know anything about my opponent's hand. My Teferi dies. This is sad. We messed this game up a lot. Oh, God. The, I don't have my normal stops, so this is just off. We're going to scoop this up. I've got to keep my normal stops on because I keep clicking through things that took some of my stops off. I have like a lot of stops because when I play Death Shadow, I don't need very much to play. But whenever I play another deck, I tend to change them. So I probably just shouldn't change. Like when I play Ironworks, I can't get a lot of them in there. I wonder what the creatures aren't good. Negate's probably pretty good. And then Timely Reinforcements is probably fine. Cards that are not great. I feel like all my cards are just good against this deck. I don't really know how to sideboard. Rafi, what do I sideboard? V-click isn't great. Okay. Detention Sphere, probably not great. Though they're probably going to cut their abrupt decays. Timely Reinforcements, medium against Maelstrom Pulse, but if they Maelstrom Pulse that, we're probably okay. Play Mardu. I have not really a lot of interest in playing Mardu. If we're going to be above the rim there. I think the deck is like just fine. And it's fairly easy to play. So there's just not really a lot of need to practice it. Just go one Terminus. Just cut the, like, the fat. Make your cards bigger. Down one hieroglyphic illumination. I feel like I draw two, and this deck is so nice. I'm at 60 right now. I don't know what other cards I want to bring in. <clears throat> I need a card that is better than the illumination, Rafi. I'm not playing Baneslayer Angel against Liliana the Veil deck. I can go with another Terminus plan. Get a little two for one. Time is probably okay, Teddy. Right? I mean, isn't it just kind of like make some dudes, have a board. If they blow it up with a pulse, and that's okay. All right, we're going to keep this. We're going to be cycling this illumination on turn one. Because we need some land drops. Oh, we can probably get these draw step stops off. I remember when I played Mardu, I played Mardu at the GP, I played a couple Liliana the Veils in my main deck um, to combat this matchup more. You know, I, I definitely edicted some, uh, I got to edict some, whatever they are, um, I got to edict some Bane Slayer Angels after sideboard and that was really, really good. Won me a couple games. Well, let me one game, because I only played against Blue-White once when I was playing Mardu. No, I played 
I played against it the once the day before, and then once in the tournament, and got to like edict with Liliana after sideboard twice, and that was just like the stones. I went like edict, like they went like tap out Bane Slayer Angel. I was like edict flashback lingering souls, and my opponent's like, I can't attack this at all. I probably should have just F6 from the start. It's nice they didn't play a Bob. I bet they're going to take... They probably should just take Cryptic Command at this point. Because my timely doesn't do anything. So maybe timely's not good. Timely's also not very good against Bob. Because, like, if they play Bob and then I timely, it's like they get to draw cards and I get 1-1s. One so maybe that's another argument for Timely not being very good. And Timely's like good against Liliana the Veil, not very good against Liliana the Last Hope. It might have been greedy for me to cycle this Illumination also. Alright, that's not bad. You know, snap, Timely Snap Timely maybe someday. Liliana, the last hope. It's getting awkward. Though this doesn't do anything if it's just plussing. If it's just plussing, then eventually we're going to be able to bounce it with a cryptic command. I'm not super worried about it. We got a Blood Raid Elf. Okay. Hit Inquisition. Yeah, we're just gonna let all this resolve. We're not gonna we're not even gonna cast. He's gonna take a snapcaster. We're not playing the other one. He's gonna crack me. We can go timely reinforcements next turn, play Ghost Quarter, and then like not block the Blood Raid Elf, threaten to crack the Liliana. I don't really think that it's a winning plan playing a Snapcaster Mage at the end of their turn. And we just kind of got to wait for like a Teferi or another Cryptic to deal with this last hope. And if we wait that out, we should be okay. Don't forget to use this. That's not an awful draw. Because worst comes to worst, I can maybe path one of my own soldiers. I really, I'm not going to trade with this Blood Red Elf. Probably no matter what I do. Yeah, I'm probably just going to, like, path one of my own soldiers. Because I don't want them to tick down and get this Blood Bread Elf back. Let's get a little rampant growth action. Oh, that sucks. Don't kill my soldier. This might be greedy. I don't know. Because we just hit a land, I'm going to feel pretty bad. If he kills this, I'm going to feel kind of bad. It's a lot of feel... 
feel bad going on here that I don't think should be happening. Like I think I should be handling this guy. Yeah, they definitely have like a Kolagons command. They're thinking about here. If you figured all this out, this all out. Maybe. I mean, this isn't an awful play, right? Like, this is going to get me to Terminus, and then hopefully I can snap Cryptic this. If he kills this, I think I'm going to actually probably ditch the Terminus and hopefully I snap Cryptic this. You're so constructive, Rafi. What are we doing? It's just not going good. Uh, you're bleeding cards. Well, like, yes, but, I mean, this Liliana is like, don't I kind of have to bleed? Like, I can't just sit here and not do anything. Like, what am I supposed to do? Like, just, am I supposed to just, like, die with cards in my hand and knock the top of my deck and hopefully it does it for me? You gotta stop focusing on how to react to each threat. Just focus on how you win the game. Well, I have to react to threats to win the game. Isn't that kind of a, 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 a not good answer? I should have just, I also should have ditched my Terminus, but, all right, well, that's a good draw. All right. So, what do we got? We have three, six. This is another return target permit to his own hand draw card. <clears throat> you're not going to win the react to each threat game. Yeah, when the threats are planeswalkers, though, I mean, that's different, right? They eat my snapcaster, sure. If you left Ghost Quarter up, which might have been good, we did hit a land, though. So now we can at least negate this thing on the way down, which is nice. Yeah, I definitely should have I should have ditched the Snapcaster Mage. That was a mistake. I was just zoning out. I should have ditched the Snapcaster Mage instead of the Terminus. Like that was a mistake. Because you are minus two path on your token. It might have been right to path to Scoos and just hope. Yeah, because like I can still I'm still in like sort of the same spot. They might just fire up Raging Ravine here. And if they do, then... They, they know I have a Snapcaster Mage. So firing up the Ravine would be kind of loose. Right. Some decent draw. It's gonna buy us some time. We need like a turn. We gotta clear the board and then be able to deal with these man lands. So like, I definitely I am feeling the pain of not dealing with this scavenging ooze though. Because if I hit a Terminus, then I'm not going to have any gas left in my graveyard to deal with this ooze. Or to, to clean up these man lands. So, I'm definitely feeling that pain. I have to go down a land to deal with one of these. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to wait for them to attack. So this, one, two, fire this. One, to fire this. They attack with everything. Ghost quarter one. Probably try to trade with this scavenging ooze. 
and then take six, and the board is still not good. I'm definitely going to try to trade with the Zoos. All right, well, now we got to trade with this Blood Red Elf. But it probably would have been stupid for them to jam the Scavenging Ooze into that play anyways. Black Leaf Cliffs, okay. Teferi or a Jace would be nice. Not even sure what Teferi would do. Tarmogoyf. Tarmogoyf. It's probably a decent start. So block this. Ghost Quarter. Yeah, I mean, we need some dynamite search for his Kanta hits. Especially considering he can keep me off search. You do you, bugaboo. Definitely some growing pains, which are going to happen. But... That's the hard part of playing control. It's, like, it's, it's just tough to be reactive. Which, you know, is going to be good to do. Because I, I do think this deck is good. Like, my opinion of it has changed. And it's going to, it's nice to know how to play it. So that I can just pick it up if I need to. Wish you'd have seen me play that sweet control. I want to control me, Arapi. And it was awesome. Wish you'd have seen that one. You'd have been so proud. Not for a little while. Like... I don't think Death Shadow is, like, super great right now. It might be getting better because Humans is getting a little worse. Picks. There's... I just proxied the deck for the lols. Alright, so... Can I probably just Ghost Quarter this? Oh, shoot. I don't have Stop set. Well, that's annoying. Not sure how much it matters, but at this point, Alice put target creature onto its library second from the top. Okay. No. All right, let's buy a little time here. Oust, snap, oust. Look at that, Rafi. I did this right. You see, I led with the oust on this, on this one first. You would have been that. <clears throat> How am I Dobbs? I have a ghost quarter. Only need some of the lands and the snaps. I have an unfinished Mario Power Mile, but I'm aiming to buy into Death Shadow. Yeah, I mean, Death Shadow is a good deck to have. Like, I think it's just not quite as good as it used to be. It was decent about a month and a half, two months ago. Yo, Rafi, you saying I'm dogs when I'm not. You don't know anything. You don't know anything, Rafi. You're such a dumbo. I could ghost quarter them also to shuffle away these cards, or it would be just strip mine. Put target creature on oh, the second from the top. We don't know he has burn in hand. You negative Nancy. Never saw any video again, just in some major events. I'm going to block because, like, losing to Colagon's Command would be annoying. I doubt they have Lightning Bolt in their deck. <clears throat> it's a deck that rewards, like, you know how to like 
sequence. You know how to like lean on your opponent, put them in tough spots, then it's a solid deck. You got a bolt, man. We have to sh we have to shuffle away the two threats too. Oh, there's one Tarn Glyph. Always yield. Yes. Detention sphere, black. They got it. All right, we're gonna play the last. Even though we can't cash, we're gonna play the last match of our league because we're doing some learning. And then we'll we're probably gonna play another league at least of this deck. Mm. I was like, you yeah, know, the the Jeskai, but I like the Jeskai plan better. Yeah, I mean, the Jeskai plan of just like, I don't know, answer enough things and burn you out. It's sometimes, sometimes effective. Have you ever... Your bolts reach and U dub and helix. This is like my first time playing the deck in a long time, so I don't really know enough about it to miss that. I don't think lightning bolt and lightning helix are very good in the format right now, unless you use them to kill your opponent, though. They're very good against humans. I did win the play roll. Play roll. Um, this hand's just not good, right? Like, I got a mulligan this hand. Like, I don't think I can play with two of these in my hand opener. This one's not great either, but... <clears throat> but we're going to keep it. Yeah, we do want lands. Oh, what is going on, Moto? We're good. Black Leaf Cliffs. Faith of Sluting. We playing some interact. We playing against Mardu or we playing against another Bridgevine deck? Playing against a Bridgevine deck. I'm going to play this because if my opponent gets a bunch of um, bridge from blows in their graveyard, I can flash this in and block to deal with them. You should borrow my Ancestral Visions. We're not going to block. We're not going to deal with these, but I don't think Ancestral Visions is that good. Like, I was just, I, I played a blue-white mirror, and my opponent had Ancestral Visions, and I still just buried them. Like, I think Illuminations is just the same thing as Ancestral Visions. Not, I mean, it's not exactly the same thing, but it does a similar thing that is not like you draw it on turn eight, and it's awful. Still didn't hit a bridge, which is kind of annoying. Like, four illuminations might be a bit much, but... If I play four illuminations, I probably can't play four terminuses. Termini. Terminus I. I kind of just want to eat this thing. Because, like, there's sack outlet. And if they go like, yeah, I think I'm just going to like get rid of this sack outlet. We're going to give this a whirl. See how this works. We have another Snapcaster Mage that we can flash in, and it also turns on our Logic Knot. Okay. Put a card on top. Hallelujah. 
Always yield. It does kind of suck we didn't hit a land there, but it's nice. We got the sack outlet off the board. I feel like I have such a big brain. My brain is huge. So we're going to logic knot whatever he kept on top here. Then we're going to brainstorm. Oh, it's a greater Gargadon. So they have another sack outlet. Now, the big question is, is it right for me to, if I play Jace, am I supposed to brainstorm this Terminus back on top? Walky boy. I want to counter this, and I think I'm going to. I think I'm just going to keep this board clear, then hit this Jace, get a brainstorm in, and then be able to put this Terminus on top at least. So I feel like I really want to play this Jace because I think that if this Jace resolves, it's just going to fix my problems. I guess we'll just keep, we want to keep the timely. Well, the timely's awful if we turn this. The timely will be good at some point. So let's go like this and this. And hope that the J, J Dog Millionaire gets me there. Gotta keep an eye on this, though. Plus for one. You got it. Do you have your fake Miracle Trigger on? No. Aw, oh, man. We're going to have to deal with this Gargadon, which is going to be annoying if we try to tap out for Jace. So we might have to just play like a little waiting game where we hold Snap Logic Knot for this thing. I would do that. I probably can do it in these matchups where like things are slower. No. One, two, three, four. So if he draws land creature, one, two, three, four, five, six. He only put two more permanents in place, so we can't. He can't kill my Jace next turn. I probably should plus though. You're just telling your opponent your draws. Yeah. So let's just plus on them. Make so we don't get bushwhacked out of there. Put Vengevine on the bottom. No. Because even if the last card's Faithless Looting, they have to discard a card and they can't return the Vengevine. So you can have this. It takes like 30 seconds over the course of the game. Okay, that makes sense. So they ditch Vengevine, Bridge from Below. Okay. I probably should have. It still says it can cast for its Miracle Cost. I can at least brainstorm this back now and then have Snapcaster Mage. Or if I find an instant speed draw spell. If I find like an Illumination, then I'm in a good spot. Okay. One Gravy Boy. Sacks it. Did you hit a zero drop? No, they're going to... Oh, they didn't hit another mana. They hit a zero drop. I guess they would have been able to kill my Jace there. I did not think they were going to be able to do that. Nice. I don't think we're going to... We're going to put... This land and this terminus on top. Play this and pass. Where we're going to be able to kind of pick our poison here. If my opponent commits to the board, we can jace everything away. If they don't commit to the board, we can pass something. We can counterspell something. 
Then we can just float this terminus when we need it. I do wish we could draw it at instant speed, though. Oh, they have two Venge Vines? Oh my gosh. So we gotta wait for them to attack. If they have a Bushwhacker, then like, that's not good. Path this. Now we're going to go Snapcaster Mage, try to path the Vengevine. Then we're going to block this, which will make them sack it, which doesn't really matter. And then next turn, we Miracle Terminus and have... Um, we Miracle Terminus and have Snapcaster Logic Knot for this Greater Gargadon with Jace. So we should be in pretty good shape. And then they'll sack this to keep their bridge vines around. Oh wow, they're gonna let their bridge vine the bridge from below go? Hmm. Definitely should have sacked. So now we Miracle. Too bad I can't cast Timely. And Miracle, but like, you know, we can't have it all. Cast it. Oh, cast, cast the card in my hand, okay. I was looking, I was cast, I was hitting the stack. I was brainstorm. That's not bad. All these cards are pretty solid. I think I'm not going to need this timely reinforcements. And I don't need this search this turn. Oh, I could have drawn the search and then just path this Greater Gargadon. I am going to try to counter this Greater Gargadon because I'd like to save my paths for these Venge Vines. So I'm going to try not to use my fetch land. <clears throat> but I do think we've fixed this one up. We get an EOT. That's nice because it doesn't add to the Vengevine targeting, the Vengevine casting, which likely a mistake for my opponent. But people make mistakes. Oh, I should have countered it. I was just talking about countering it. No, I guess we're not going to do that. I could bounce it. I could just, like, bounce it with Jace. There's a lot going on with this deck, which makes this a little difficult. So, you have to get used to it. We're not going to play this well for a little while. I think I probably just want these. And I probably want the click and the timely to be able to trade. I'm going to assume all my counter spells suck. My search sucks. Um... My settles are probably pretty good. Let's cut a Jace, cut a Teferi, cut this, and we'll go like this. Try this out. I think all my counter spells are probably pretty poor.
<clears throat> so we have a path. Cell is very good. <coughs> Terminus is not very good in our hand. <coughs> I think it's a tough one to mulligan. Because settles very good, and we have another piece of interaction. On the draw, a good draw would be like a Snapcaster Mage. I think I'm going to keep it. I can mulligan to Rest in Peace and then have a chance that Rest in Peace is too slow anyways. So, I don't know. I don't know how aggressively I'm supposed to mulligan to a hate card in a control deck like this. Like, I know that I'm supposed to mulligan to, like, a ley line whenever I play Death Shadow, you know? All right, clicks these. If like my opponent plays, like, a Ballista here, I'm going to smoke this Stitcher Supplier. Because so I don't, really don't want them to, like, gain a lot of advantage from this. Or get, like, a another activation. Alright, so there's a Bloodgast. Bloodgast isn't worth pathing. Yeah, it's not worth shocking to path. Okay. So we're not going to do anything here. We're just going to yield until the end of turn. Yield until next time. So we're going to get a Hollow Fountain. A Rest in Peace here would be really nice. I actually wouldn't even be that nice because, like, the Stitcher Suppliers will still live through it and they'll have an activation after my opponent deals with it, theoretically. Oh, get out of my draw step. This is like probably getting pathing this blood gas. Even if they hit me with whatever it is, a bushwhacker, I'm gonna take two, four, six, nine, and go to nine. Okay, so they did hit a bridge. Stitcher Supplier, okay. My Detention Sphere would be nice right now. Another Bushwhacker, okay. And a Vengevine. Okay, so there's Ballista for a lot of tokens. So it's definitely pathing the Vengevine now. Oh, give me one second. Hello? I'm streaming. Okay. Sounds good. Bye. Okay. So we're going to path this. This is going to be my last match of the day, unfortunately. I have something going on. So we're going to call it after this one, unfortunately. I assume that we are dead as a doorknob next turn. A timely reinforcements would let us live. Timely would actually be pretty great. I would go like block, 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 take. I don't know how great it would be, but I would gain a bunch of life. Okay, so. Two, block these, block this, take two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I might as well click my opponent in their draw step. And then. No, I, f oh, I know, that was so bad. Because now I, I had to play this tap so I could play an untapped land and be able to, um, and be able to, uh, play Settle the Wreckage next turn. So this likely just kills me. So 
So now I have to click myself because I need to hit an untapped land. No, I did that. Um, get rid of this one. It's not going to stay dead. None of these things stay dead. So now we just have to go like settle the wreckage into settle the wreckage into Baneslayer Angel probably. But we already get another turn. Well, it shouldn't have attacked with everything. Probably should have attacked with like two or three cards. Wow, they didn't have any more basics, or they just like were whatever. I'm not searching. I mean, a hanger, a walking bus that kills me, which would make sense for them to. Like, you know, I would I would have attacked with everything if I had drawn a walking blister for the turn. <clears throat> See, lethal attacker. I'll path this in their upkeep. I don't think it really matters, but I don't want to like, give them another shot to draw a bridge. Should I play the field so I could also field them and just do something with my mana? Wow, they let that go? So they must have a ballista. That's gotta be what this means. Because you're basically taking a redraw pretty much anything. Unless they have they either have a ballista or a whatever it is. A uh, blood gas, probably. That's what they're sitting here on. This is wild. So now we actually have a counter spell. Wow. This is nuts. It did some greater guard on. Counter target spell draw a card. Holy shnikes. Don't play a blister. Ah, no. Okay. They got us. All right. Last game. Last game of the day. What if I want this Supreme Verdict? Like, if we are, we just want Maximum Wraths, if that's our game plan. Maybe we don't have time for a stupid cantrip. But Illumination's probably better. If we're, gonna, if we're gonna be casting as a cantrip, Illumination's worse than Serum Visions. What's going on, big man? Gonna take Philly to the dog park with some friends today. I would like to play first. 
I want to keep this because I have a path. I have Baneslayer Angel settle, and I can get there, and like Snapcaster can help deal with a stupid um, a bridge. We just got to hope that we get there with our lands. And maybe I'm supposed to mulligan, but... But, like, the Baneslayer Angel, like, we're going to fall behind. Baneslayer Angel is going to, there's going to be the card that catches us back up. But he's never beating a Baneslayer Angel. I mean, we, not, we might not even be able to beat what he does, but. We have two draws to actually just rip a, um, to rip a rest in peace, which the rest in peace would do something now. They've, they've got a Venge Vine in there. All right, another land is step one. Timely is nice. I don't hate going like timely reinforcements and then like just trying to block out and then eventually pathing one of my timely tokens because I just want to hit my land drops. I'm tempted to just path this. With this on attack stack so we can't scry. I think I'm going to. Or I could path. No, I'm not even really worried about it. I think I think I'm gonna flash my Snapcaster Mage in to No, I'm gonna try I'm gonna get rid of this. So we're just going to take four. I'm going to path this Viserys here. He's going to sack this. And then I'm going to play Timely next turn. Probably go sack, sack, make two tokens. Mill a bunch. <clears throat> Oh, he just did that one. Okay, he didn't sack this. That's a, that's a that makes me they have an artifact, an enchantment disruption spell. Okay, I always forget that I've got the draw step set. I'm probably just gonna chump, <clears throat> do a lot of chump blocking. Just stretch this out as long as I can. And hopefully set this settle up. This settles really good. Okay, so next one's Blood Ghast and Grave Crawler. My phone's board is getting quite wide. So they can then bring this back. This game probably hinges on my next land drop, if I had to guess. Collective Brutality. Took my settle, which is pretty big. Now I can go chump, D sphere the zombies. If he doesn't do anything, I'm just gonna like probably Snapcaster path a token just to get to this Baneslayer Angel. Because he's just never beating this Baneslayer Angel in a million years. Yeah, so now we just go chump. 
Actually, I'm going to trade. Well, now I'm going to jump. Bridges go. Sphere these. Unless I missed my land drop, which I didn't. Get these two zombies. Chump one more time. Take two. Hope we rip a land drop. Yield until next end step. <clears throat> Flashing back looting. I guess I could have waited on my sphere because of um, because of, like they have lootings in the graveyard and they can dig for more bridges. So they ditched. Okay. Just chumping this thing. Taking two. Land we good. I take a rest in peace. Hollow Fountain. Land. And that is likely game. Especially considering we're going to be able to like snap time. Like I'm not even going to block so that I can snap timely next turn. Well, I guess I will block just to eat something, but. I probably won this game. So like. But I guess we can just snap timely for the three one ones because the life's irrelevant. Great crawler. Okay, cast the timely before. Well, now we're just going to play this rest in peace. Always yield. Now I don't even care. I'm going to attack. I, I, I can block here. I just want to get the rest in peace and play. He has so much stuff in his graveyard. So what happens if I attack? I just 15. If they cast Bushwhacker, chump here, take 3, 6, 9, 11. I'll be at 22. That'll put me to 11. Oh, shoot. The Snapcaster Mage is gone now. Yeah, you were right, Rafi. You were right. I forgot about that interaction there. I was so excited I drew my rest in peace. All right, we're going to just attack now. Now that I don't have the timely, I'm just going to finish this game. It's not timely. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I, I wasn't even thinking about it, Rafi. The one thing I have underestimated this deck is that it is a different mindset to play this type of thing. Now I know why Meg is always disappointed. It's our first league, Rafi. Okay. It's the first league. All right. I'm tired. I had to beat some scrub all night on Friday night, then drove eight hours yesterday. Okay. All right. Well, they conceded. I told them not to. Okay. Let's go back to the deck here. Come on, Moto, you can do it. Okay. All right. I think this deck's very good. Like, I did not play it very well, and I still think it's pretty awesome. I think I really like my Illuminations. I think I'm going to play the Illuminations still. I might not play all four. Like, I could see making one of these Illuminations of Serum Visions and then making one of these Terminuses, like, either another Settle or a Supreme Verdict. Probably a Supreme Verdict just to have another, or like a Wrath of God, then like put this in here, then make another Wrath of God. I don't know enough about the sideboard. My sideboard was likely a mess. I don't know enough about that to 
really know it. Or I can just cut this terminus, play another one of these. Because this card's really good. I was pretty I was pretty impressed with this card all day. Probably good against my combo matchups, which is what's hard. So I think if I move forward, I, I want to play this deck more in the future. But I would like to play this is a serum, this is another third serum visions. Because it makes my Snapcaster mages better. Um Besides that, I don't really know enough about the deck to like say, oh my well my counter spells weren't right. Or, you know, I should have played another spot removal spell. Um and the sideboard, sideboard, same thing. My friend that played it at the GP did played two rest in pieces and two surgicals. And he said he was a big fan. So maybe we'll try that out. But that's gonna be it for me today. I appreciate everybody for showing up and hanging out.